In this video, I am going to show you how to create a Neo4j sandbox that you can use for your development environment during a course. A Neo4j sandbox is a temporary instance of a Neo4j database in the cloud that you use to learn about Neo4j. First, you go to the Sandbox page, sandbox.neo4j.com. One thing that is important when using the Sandbox site in your browser is that you must ensure that you have no ad blocker or JavaScript enabled that could prevent pages from loading. Additionally, Neo4j uses tracking cookies that you must accept. To create a Neo4j Sandbox, you must have a Neo4j Sandbox account. Your ID for this account is associated with one of your social media IDs or your email address. We use Auth0 to authenticate your identity where you need to respond to the email that we send you to verify who you are. After you have responded to the verification email, you are then able to log into your Sandbox account. When you enter your Sandbox account for the first time, you are presented with this panel to select a project that you want to create. There are many sandboxes that you can choose from, most of which contain data so that you can explore an existing data model and its data. For our training classes, you must select the blank sandbox. This is a sandbox that has no data in it as you will be adding data to it when you perform the exercises for the course. We then click Create Project to create the Sandbox instance. It takes about 30 seconds to create the instance. Once the Sandbox instance has been created, some instructional pop-ups appear that provide a brief tour of the Sandbox instance. Here you see that the newly created sandbox has a default duration of three days. You will receive an email near the end of the three-day period reminding you that it will expire soon. You can extend the lifetime of a sandbox to exist for up to 10 days. For your coursework, you will typically access the Sandbox instance using Neo4j browser where you can enter cipher statements to load and query the graph. Notice here that there is also a pop-up guide that will show you some highlights of using Neo4j browser that you can step through. Here we simply dismiss the pop-up guide for now. Here we see that the graph for this sandbox has no data. That is, it has no nodes or relationships. Most sandboxes contain a browser guide that you can step through to learn more about Cypher to access data in the Sandbox. Here we scroll down to the Start Sandbox where we can advance through the guide. The Cypher Browser Guide shows some simple Cypher statements that you can execute. You click the Code block and it brings the Cypher code into the Query Edit pane where you can execute it against the graph. If you later decide to access the data in the graph with one of the programming languages that Neo4j supports, you can view sample code to access the graph here. In the Connection Details pane, notice that access to the graph via an API uses the Bolt port and the unique password for the instance. When you are done with the sandbox, you can terminate it but if you forget to do so, it will automatically be terminated at the end of the 3-day or 10-day period. And on the right, you can see some helpful links, including a link if you need support during your use of the sandbox. So that's a quick tour of how to create a Neo4j sandbox that you can use for your development environment during a course.